researchers, welcome to another video lesson in Practical Research 2. So we are done in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, and we are now in Chapter 3, which is the research methodology. And under that, we have the research design. So you already know the research design, and now we come up with the sample and the sampling procedure. So remember when you were taught how to write your scope and delimitation, you stated the subjects, participants, or respondents of your study. You also described their characteristics which qualify them to be the source of your research data. So the next question that I am going to ask you is, how many of the subjects, participants, or respondents should be selected as a source of data? So this video lesson will teach you how to describe sampling procedure in quantitative research. Take note guys that the sampling procedure should be aligned to your chosen research design. So I know that you have already decided the research design of your study, then you are ready for this lesson. But let me ask you first these questions. When you hear the word population and sample, what comes in your mind? So let us find out the meaning of population. So it is the totality of all the objects, elements, persons, and characteristics under consideration. So, it is understood that this population possesses common characteristics which the research aims to explore. And there are two types of target population, and these are the target population and the accessible population. According here, the target population is the actual population. For example, your research study focused on the senior high school students at the Masalang National High School. So that means your target populations are all the senior high school in the Masalang National High School. While the accessible population is the portion of the population with the researcher has reasonable access. For example, all senior high school who are enrolled in the Masalang National High School, particularly in general academic strand, or either in science and technology and engineering mathematics strand, or either in accountancy, business and mathematics, and this is management strength. So those are the target population. That is part or portion of the total population among senior high school in the Dimasalang National High School. So in the whole population, for example, in the Dimasalang National High School, senior high school department, that is very time consuming or very impractical to consider, then a sim sample representative is identified. Kaya dyan na po pumapasok yung tinatawag natin na sampling. So according to the definition, sampling pertains to the systematic process of selecting the group to be analyzed in the research study. So the goal is to get information from a group that represents the target population. So according here, so the goal is to get information from a group that represents the target population. So once a good sample is obtained, the generalization and applicability of the findings is obtained. So, the generalizability and applicability of findings increases. So, the representative subset of the population refers to the sample. For example, all of the 240 senior high school students enrolled in science and technology, engineering and mathematics strand in our school, for example, constitute the population. So that represents the total population or the target population. Then 60 of those students constitute the sample. So ibig sabihin, kukuha lang tayo doon sa out of 240, kukuha tayo ng 60 na sample. So a good sample should have characteristics of the representative population. So characteristics that are within the scope of the study with fair accuracy. So generally, the larger the sample, the more reliable the sample, but still it will depend on the scope and delimitation and research design of the study. So, ibig sabihin, yung total respondents of the study or the respondents of the study should be based upon on, the, on your scope and delimitation and of course the research design of your specific study. There are different things to consider or different approaches to consider in, in identifying the sample size. The first is that this is according to heuristics. So this approach refers to the role of the thumb for 
example sa Esther, early established approach by Guy, stated by Cristobal and De La Cruz, in 2017, that is page 172, sample size for different research designs are the following. So we have the descriptive research, the number of participants or subjects of the study, that is 10% to 20%. Then for the comparative research study, 15 subjects or groups. Then for the learning birds and ERB, as cited by Barrett in 2017, page 107 also suggested different sample size for each quantitative research design. So for the survey, we have the correlational 100 to 200. For the survey, 800. For the exposed factor, 30 plus experimental research design, we have the 30 or more. Then another approach is in identifying the sample size that we need to consider is also the literature review. So another approach is by reading similar or related literature and studies to your current research study. So since you are done writing your review of related literature and studies, you might want them to recall how these studies determine sample size. So using this approach increases the validity of your sampling procedure. Another thing, and this is the most common uh, approaches in, the, in determining the sample size, is using the formulas. We have the most common formula, which is the Slovens formula. The Slovens formula states for that is small n is equal to capital N over 1 plus capital N e squared, where small letter n is the sample size, where the capital N is the population, uh, population size, e is the margin of error or the desired margin of error, or this pertains to the uh, percentage of accuracy, accuracy of, the, of your research results. So let us have this given example. For example, there are 600 grade 7 junior high school students at Dimasalang National High School. We need to compute the sample size using the margin of error of 5%, which is the 95% accuracy. So let us just substitute. So that is n is equal to 600 over 1 plus 600 times 0 0.05. 0 0.05 that is converted already. 5% that is 0 0.05 in decimal form. So that is e uh, squared. That is equal to 600 over 1 plus 600 times the, uh, the square root of 0 0.05 is 0 0.0025. So that is equal to 600 over 1 plus 1.5 and that is 240 a sample size. So, ibig sabihin, out of 600 target population among grade 7 students at Dimasalang National High School, kukuha lang po tayo ng 240 respondents. So, I hope uh, you already know on how are you going to use the Slovens formula to get the sample size. Then, meron din tayong tinatawag na yung dalawang klase ng sampling. Meron tayong uh, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. This is in quantitative research. So according here to the definition, the first type of under probability sampling, meron tayong simple random sampling. So sabi dito, ang simple random sampling ay isang pamamaraan sa pagpili ng mga individual na lahat ng mga membro ng ating accessible population ay mabibigyan ng pagkakataon na mapili. So, meron tayong iba't ibang pamamaraan kung paano kumuha ng sample gamit ang simple random sampling. So, ito yung fishbowl technique, rule it well, or use of the table of random numbers. Another one is the stratified random sampling. Sabi dito, si stratified random sampling is the same, kapariho lang ng simple random sampling na kung saan yung lahat ay mabibigyan ng pagkakataon na mapili na magiging respondents or sample of our research study. So that is under the stratified random sampling. For example, a population of 600 junior high school students includes 180 grade 7, 160 grade 8, 150 grade 9, and 110 grade 10. So kung meron tayong computed sample size using the Slovens formula na 240, papano kaya natin Paano kaya tayo kukuha ng representative sa bawat grade level out from that 600 junior high school students? So, ganito yung gagawin natin. Una, so, we all know na merong 180 grade 7. So, ang gagawin natin ay 
I-divide natin yung 180 sa total population na 600 and that is equal to 0.30. I-multiply natin doon sa computed natin na sample size na 240. So we can get or obtain na 72 grade 7 students. So ibig, sa, ibig sabihin, out of 180 target population in grade 7, kukuha lang tayo doon ng 72. So ibig sabihin, silang lahat ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon na magiging parte ng ating research study. Then, ang susunod ay grade 8. Meron tayong 160 na grade 8 divided by 600, that is 0 0.27 times 240. So, kukuha tayo or makakakuha tayo ng 65 grade 8 students. Then, another one is 150 for the grade 9 divided by 600. That is equal to 0 0.25 times 240 and that is equal to 60 grade 9 students. Then for the grade 10, meron tayong 110 divided by 600 and that is equal to 0 0.18 times 240 and that is equal to 43 grade 10 students. All in all, all, in all there are 240 respondents. So that is how are you going to use the stratified random sampling. So papasok na naman tayo sa another types of probability sampling. Ito yung cluster sampling. Sabi dito, ang procedure na to ay ina-apply natin sa malawakang pananaliksik or pag-aaral. So, geographical spread out of the population is a challenge since napakalaking population yung, yung target population natin. So, kagamit tayo ng clustering. So, to get our information. So, since this is very time-consuming na pag masyadong malawak yung uh, pananaliksik natin, very time-consuming na silang lahat ay kukuha, kukuna natin ng idea. Very time-consuming. So, papasok dito yung clustering. So, it involves grouping of the population according to subgroups or clusters. For example, our target population are the senior high school students among the Masbat, entire Masbati province. So, we all know in Masbati province, meron tayong um, tatlong district. The first district, the second district. So, those uh, strata na first and second district can be considered as an example of the clusters. Then we can also classify, we can cluster them also according to per, minis, per municipality. So municipality called also as the strata and can be chosen, uh, be part of the cluster. So from the chosen population will be created by the researcher in order to have a homogeneous characteristics. So that is under cluster sampling. Then another one is, ito yung systematic sampling. So this procedure is as simple as selecting samples every end or every second or fifth of the chosen population until arriving at a desired total number of sample size. So therefore, the selection is based on predetermined intervals. So dividing the population size by the sample size, the interval will be obtained. For example, for if our study focused on the Grade 12 students, senior high school students at Dimasalang National High School. It has a total population of 75. So, ibig sabihin, you have 25 samples out of that. So, using systematic sampling, you will decide to select every third person on the list of the individuals. So, that's all for the probability sampling. I hope everyone, and after this video lesson, you will be able to, to formulate the sampling procedure and the sample and you'll be able to know the total number of respondents of your research study that will serve as the representative or the sample uh, size of your given research study. Bye everyone!